everybody, and welcome back to the podcast. Uh, it is time to grow as a spiritual leader. And Laura, I love the name of this podcast. And, you know, we really, in the beginning of starting this podcast, we kicked around several different names. And they all had the same theme, but around spirit, mm-hmm. which is a, a thing that so many in the world and, and even the church uh we, we haven't seen what we could and should as it pertains to the spiritual life uh, that we're yes, called to. We're very acclimated to natural Natural, things. because we've been raised and uh, developed in a, a very intellectual and physically uh, body-driven society. Yeah. Uh, we were sharing last we night uh, in a service, you know, how our education, you know, from the time we start school in kindergarten, you know, it's pretty much all focused it on the mind. yeah and you know a little, little bit of physical yeah, education yeah a little bit of physical there, education the there uh <laughs> but it is it's intellectual we're developing yeah. our intellect uh one of our fathers in the faith Kennedy Hagan said uh you know man has educated their mind at the expense of their spirit and uh, and he he grew and learned all this through through many 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 years of study and seeking the lord uh, and, and life experience of, uh, you know, what this living in the spirit really is. And it's a huge yeah. theme in the scripture, but I, I love what uh, Kenneth Hagin said, that after 15 years of really kind of study and prayer and seeking the Lord and through a lot of life's experience, he said he came to this conclusion. And it was just, it was a revelation and uh, just something so powerful for him at the time. And of course, he released this revelation in the body of Christ. He said, that with the spirit, man contacts the spiritual realm, yeah. right? And then with the soul, which is your mind, will, and emotions, man contacts the mental arena. Yeah. Uh, and then, of course, with the body, man contacts the physical realm. Yeah. Uh, so, but the scripture really, and, and it's a little bit veiled and hidden if you're not looking for it, but the scripture really kind of paints uh, this picture of these three parts of man. Man is a spirit, he has a soul, and he lives in a body. Because I was about to say, why is it so important that we walk in the spirit? And you just hit on it. It's because we are a spirit. We are a spirit. Yeah. And uh, uh, a minister, I uh, heard say this several times years ago, he said, if people, I think he was quoting another minister, he said, if people could see have a glimpse into the spiritual realm just one time for seconds, they would all but run to church. Uh, Because once you see, uh, or if you're given a glimpse Mm -hmm. or have a revelation of the reality and existence of the spiritual realm, you will see (laughs) what, you know, that is, and you'll be more apt to say, I need to begin to operate in this realm. So that's what we kind of want to talk about for the next podcast or two is um, living and walking in the spirit because our victory is in the spirit. Um, But I I had this scripture, I I think you have the Galatians, Mm -hmm. I have uh, 2 Corinthians, and I want to read mine first uh, here, but it's 2 Corinthians 5, 16, a verse that the Lord's really been speaking to me. Uh, I want to encourage you if you're if you're listening and able or watching uh, to you know get something to write on and write these two passages down and write down any of these points uh, because you want to be able to go back over these and let the Lord really speak to your heart and, and the, the idea of talking about these things and really the whole purpose of this pod- podcast is to develop ourselves as spiritual leaders. Yeah. Right. We need to walk yeah. this thing out in That's the spirit it, because you grow. You yes. grow in that. And and everything yeah. I think we try to do here predominantly is focused on the things of the spirit. You know, it may sound natural when we talk about faith or love or mm-hmm. you know different things, but our lives if we do not take our place in the spirit and live and walk mm-hmm. from the spirit, we are never uh yeah. going to be able to rise above uh, the attacks yeah. of the enemy yeah. and yeah better walk in the fullness of our redemption and who we are in Christ. Because it impacts that natural realm. Yes. Oh, yeah. The realm of the spirit, it, there's a direct correlation. (laughs) Yep. So whatever you're taking care of over here, then it, you'll see a result in the realm, the natural realm. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and even to that, 
everything in the natural realm was created by the things of the spiritual realm. Yes. And most people yeah. would just, we don't understand that. Uh, we'll get into that another time. But uh, 2 Corinthians 5, 16, it says this. Therefore, from now on, the Apostle Paul said, we regard no one according to the flesh. That's good. From, from now on, we regard no one. He was talking about Jesus, and Jesus lived as a physical man here on the earth. He had a physical body, uh, and so much even of the church still looks at Jesus as uh, just the physical things. Yeah, they can see mm -hmm. in depictions and movies uh, of things where he died physically on the cross and he took those stripes on his back, uh, yeah. you know, from the uh, cat of nine tails, the whip and the thorn, uh, the crown of thorns on his head and the nails and the spear into the side. We see physically mm -hmm. what was done to Jesus, but what was done to Jesus really wasn't physical. Yeah, it was a good. very spiritual thing. Yeah, and what happened in the spirit was Jesus was joined to our condition spiritually yeah, yeah. <clears throat> that's why we can say just in the next verse of second corinthians mm -hmm. any man that's in christ joined to christ is yeah, a new yeah, creation well my body didn't change after i was born again my mind didn't necessarily change yeah. but my spirit was changed it was born again right yeah. so paul's saying here that we we maybe looked at jesus uh, uh in part according to the flesh we looked at him as a man uh, but he said, from now on, we're not looking at men after the flesh, meaning this, we have got to begin to see one another, uh, the body of Christ, the ministry of the church, the, the functions that we're called to, we have got to begin to look at those things in the spirit. Yeah. And we're going to get into this because it's so powerful, but it's I want good. you to read that that other scripture because it's just, again, it, they, it, they're connected here, these two verses, but Galatians. Galatians chapter three, verse one, this is the apostle Paul speaking to the church. Mm -hmm. He says, what has happened to you Galatians to be acting so foolishly? You must have oh. been under some evil spell. Didn't God open your eyes to see the meaning of Jesus's crucifixion? Wasn't he revealed to you as the crucified one? Mm. So answer me this. Did the Holy Spirit come to you as a reward for keeping all the Jewish laws? No, you received him as a gift because you believed in the Messiah. Mm. Your new life in the anointed one began with the Holy Spirit giving you a new birth. Yeah. Why then would you so yeah. foolishly turn from living in the spirit yeah. by trying to finish by your own works? I love that. And again, it's yeah. saying the same thing. He said in the second Corinthians five, we're not to regard ourselves or others according to the flesh. Yeah. We don't look at what we can see naturally. This is a principle in the That'll scriptures. That'll trip you up. Oh yeah, 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 because we have yeah. natural differences, yeah. especially in church life. I mean, it's all personalities and we don't get along with people. Paul said, we are not yeah. supposed to judge people according to the flesh or look at people according to the flesh. And then Paul picks this up here in, in the same theme or same avenue here and he says uh why to talking to the galatians the people of galatia the church there how is it that you started this work Sorry. in the spirit yeah. you you began this work in the spirit now you're getting back and mm. operating in the flesh <laughs> I, i've heard people talk about this that mo most of what paul did the apostle paul which was the the greatest <laughs> probably uh, missionary, one of the greatest of all times, and his apostolic work, he went around and started works by the Spirit. Yeah, People would come out of Judaism and uh, heathenism, you know, he reached the Gentiles too, which had a non-Jewish you know, Jewish foundation uh, outside of God's covenant of the old covenant, and they would come in and they would be born again. And much of what he did in his missionary journeys and sending others around to places where he started was to ensure and make make sure that they were continuing on yeah. in the things yeah. of the spirit. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, how does this apply to today? And this is what the Lord's been stirring in in you and I both, and I believe okay. he's stirring this in the body of Christ. So if the Lord's been dealing with you about this, just again, let let that what the Lord's been speaking to you from his word and by the Holy Spirit, let it be watered now. But if you've never heard this, let the seed be planted. And I want to say this, this, the church, the ministry, the born again experience, the Christian life is a life 
that is a life in the spirit. So good. Uh, the Lord, I've been saying this a lot recently. The Lord spoke to me, ministered to my heart in an inward impression a few years back when I was writing a, my first book, One Church. And he said this. He said, Darren, how much of what you're doing, he was talking about in ministry for me, how much of what you are doing in ministry can you do without me? <laughs> and, and, I, and I really had to pause and think about yeah, that, yeah. you know? And, and I looked across at everything I was doing, and I realized, Laura, that so much of what we do in life and ministry, yeah. we can do without God. Yeah. We can do our music programs. Now, they, they mm -hmm. may, may, may not be anointed, but yeah. we can still do music programs yeah. without yeah. God. We can do evangelism mm -hmm. without God, yeah. much of our outreach endeavors. We can preach can and minister speak. the word yes. without God. Yes. So the point the Lord was trying to say is, we are called to a level of operation where we get results mm -hmm. that only God can accomplish. And where does that happen? It happens the in the realm of the spirit. Uh, so this podcast kind of got it stirred in me uh, a couple of weeks ago when we were ministering. I, I ministered on a Monday night here at uh, Melody Church on, at Monday School, and we talked about praise. Yes. And... Yes. I, I started thinking so about it. I think it's, I don't know if you can look it up or not, but it's the scripture. I think it's 2 Corinthians 10, uh, mm -hmm. 3 and 4, uh, where it talks about the weapons mm -hmm. of our warfare. Yeah. And it, I, I don't know if you'll be able to pull it up soon enough, mm -hmm. but it, it, I'll wait. I got it. Then. Read that. Yeah, it's so good. It says, we use God's, well, verse 3, we're human. Yeah. But we don't uh, wait. We're human. Yep. We're human, yep. but we don't wage war as humans do, as natural beings. We're natural, but we don't wage war as natural Glory beings do. God. We use God's mighty weapons, not worldly weapons, to knock down the strongholds of human reasoning and to destroy false arguments. Gosh, I almost want like, to I don't, say it again. <laughs> I just want to hear it again. We are human, yeah, but we do not wage war mm. as humans do. We use God's mighty weapons, not worldly weapons. So we use spirit weapons, not natural weapons, mm. to knock down the strongholds of human reasoning Glory and to, to destroy false arguments. Now, that's interesting there. He said mm. the human weapons of reason. Yeah. Human reasoning, which is the enemy to the spirit. An unrenewed yeah. mind is an enemy to the spiritual realities that we are called to walk in. Mm. Human reasoning. Uh, but this is interesting. So I, I got to thinking about that that night, and I've thought about this hundreds of times over the years. The weapons, the King James says, the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, carnal. but mighty yeah. in or through God to the pulling down of strongholds, which he labels as things that are formed, walls and uh, whatever, that are formed by human reasoning. Yeah. So when we talk about the weapons of our warfare, and I want to finish up here for the, with the next few minutes, when we say the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they're mighty in God, these yes. weapons are spiritual weapons. Yes. So that particular yes. night we were talking about praise. So good. And we, I gave several passages of scripture mm -hmm. from the, from the word of God, how praise True spiritual praise, not yeah. just coming into a church and singing an upbeat song. That's, that's not, not that praise. may have yeah. praise may in it, but that doesn't be. mean it's praise, right? Yeah. This is a place where we're operating from the spirit. Yeah. It's yeah, not yeah. human. And Laura, that night, we were, I was ministering on that thing and I read those passages and I, I was just listening to the, the, to the Lord and I realized the enemy, the devil, the devil, who also is a spirit, who yeah. is a spirit. That's why you can't overcome him That's it. because That's you're good. trying to fight him with human ability. You can't ever, you'll never overcome the yeah. devil and walk in the fullness of who God's made you no. in Christ operating from your natural mind or physical body. You, you said last week, you won't, uh, you can't fight spiritual battles with intellectual ability. You'll lose every you'll time. Lose every every time. single time. And that's why there are so many Christians who love God, mm -hmm. who are sincere, who are in church week in and week out, but they are living a defeated life but they are trying so desperately to defeat the enemy, to get ahead, to overcome, to walk in victory with everything Reason. that they know no. here. No. Yes, th th what they know yeah. to do. Knowledge. And they're from here. That's no. where they're living, from no. here, not from here. Yep. 
I'll tell you, if you step into the things of the Spirit, glory to God, you will defeat the you devil. Will. You will triumph over sickness yes. and disease. Yes. You will triumph over fear, everything mm. attached to it, anxiety, depression. You will, you will triumph over poverty, glory. lack, insufficiency. You will trouble over mental anguish. Hallelujah. You will triumph over. Yeah. And that's why the scripture says, yeah. thanks be to God who gives us the victory, victory yeah. Through our Lord Jesus yeah. Christ. The it's, answer is in the spirit. It's in the spirit. And the answer is already there. Yeah. Christ yeah. defeated the devil. So good. First John uh, 3, 8. He came to destroy the works of the devil. Yeah. He came, he saw, he, he conquered. conquered. Now his victory is yeah. ours. But that victory must and only can be, be enforced yes. in the spirit. Yeah. Glory to God. I am a spirit. I have a soul and I live in a body. So mm. praise. So I good. said this that night talking about praise because from the word of God, you just saw where the people of God in the Old Testament mm -hmm. praised God and their enemies were defeated. Yeah. Why? Yeah. Not They didn't lift a sword in some occasions. They lifted their voice. Wow. And what happened was praise released mm. the angel armies and the power of That's God it. to triumph That's over it. their physical foes, yeah. right? Yeah. Spiritual power, spiritual weapons caused victories to happen in the natural realm, right? So that was one of those weapons. And here's what I said. The devil and all of his demons, the, the darkness of the spiritual realm are defenseless against the weapons of the spirit yes. for the born again yeah. child of God. I'm gonna say that again. The enemy, the devil and all of his cohorts, the realm of darkness is defenseless. They have no ability to defend against the spiritual weapons yeah. that we've been given. So yeah. let me ask you this, or you can ask yourself, if you are struggling in areas in your life, whether it be physical, financial, mental, whatever. Uh, if you're struggling in an area, you'd have to come to the conclusion that you have not yet taken your place or taken your place consistently enough yeah. in faith yeah. to stand in your place in the spirit. Because if you, mm -hmm. again, if you stand in the spirit, you will overcome the devil every single time. It's a daily, it's a daily choice every day, every day. I love it walk in the spirit and you walk in victory and you walk in victory they go hand in hand this is what we're called to yeah this is what we're called to laura to walk and live in the spirit so we're gonna take a look at uh, some other you know verses and principles along these lines in uh the following and podcast some weapons yeah. weapons i got a whole list use, yeah. of weapons here yeah. that they're all <laughs> spiritual so i want you to end this as we're ending this podcast i want you to just say out loud to yourself victory is mine Victory Man, is mine. Man, we used to sing that <coughs> that song. Victory yeah. is mine. Victory is mine. Victory today is mine. What? It says, according to the word, I have what I heard. Every one yeah. of the realities of the New Testament is spiritual. You will never walk in victory until you take your place in the spirit. And I want to tell you, that is hopefully the best news you will hear today. Amen. You have victory in your spirit. Yeah. All you got to do is learn how to walk in the spirit. Yeah. Amen. Trust you receive that today. Lauren, I love you. We're praying for you. We're believing for big things to happen in your life. Amen. As you take your place in the spirit. We'll see you real soon. God bless.